Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be doing basic IK and implementing it into the game with our little guy here. We're also going to be making it so that the arms and legs pull the character around as well as moving the ribcage around based off of where the physics ball is. Now I had wanted to do this all in one tutorial but I actually am going to have to break it up into two tutorials as I wasn't able to record it at less than 35 minutes long and that's a little bit long for my series. So we're going to be breaking it into two parts so this will be part Part one and the next part will be coming next week so let's go ahead and dive right in this week we're going to be going over a scene setup and the first set of code which will be the limb placement controller and the next week we'll be going over the limbs themselves as well as some modifications to the rollerball ai to get it to work with everything so first off you can see we've done some changes here we broke apart the rollerball we made it local it is no longer inherited from anything and we pulled out those limbs as well as the limb placement controller and you'll see some new nodes here we've got the target containers as well as the targets for each of the different ik's for the arms and legs. I set these up based off of the rotation of the bones of those limbs on my rig. So it's going to vary based off of your rig. Not this tutorial, but next week, I'll actually go over how to set these up. But these settings are for my specific rig, so the exact settings won't actually help you very much. You'll have to do your own. But we can go ahead and hop right into the cultist body. We'll do that over here in the pack scene. Now, it is pretty much bare bones at the moment. We do need to go ahead and make a physical body. So if we go ahead and set the skeleton 3D, select that and hit create physical physical skeleton, you'll see a whole bunch of things here that we don't really need. We don't need anything having to do with the fingers, and we also need them all renamed into something a little bit more human readable. So let me go ahead and clean that up. Now that we've got all those set up, if we were going to go ahead and go straight into Ragdoll, we would adjust all the collision shapes for these, but we're going to do that another day. We aren't going to be using Ragdoll in the actual animation. I tried that the first time, and you can see the results here. It's not exactly ideal, so we'll come back around to that. But for now, we're going to go ahead and use this. Specifically, we're going to be using the chest to actually find the bone IDs for the chest. I will say one note about our skeleton here. The skeleton starts with the root bone being the chest as opposed to the hips or a just generic root bone. This is atypical for biped skeletons. I would suggest that when you're doing your own rig, whatever bone it is being pulled from, so in my case, the chest is the one that is pulling the body around. For this style of procedural animation, I would make that at the root bone and make all other bones derive from it. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a couple new IK nodes here so we can create a new node of type skeleton IK 3D and we can just name this hand R IK and we'll go ahead and duplicate that four times and make for the other hand as well as both the feet. And we're going to leave the target nodes blank on all of them, but we are going to select all of them and set use magnet. Now a note here, I'm using the upper arm as the root bone for the, for the arms and the hand as the tip bone. And then for the feet, I'm using the thigh and the foot. And this just resulted in a pretty good look on my kit rig. It'll vary based off of what your rig looks like, though I think clavicles never really do good as being part of the IK chain, so I wouldn't use those. All right, and we're pretty much good there. We can go ahead and leave that. We can hop back over to the Cultist Prefab and we can collapse that. Later on, we'll be using those there, but not for right now. Now, let's go ahead and dive into the limb placement code. We'll go ahead and go over that and then that'll be it for this week and we'll come back in with the limbs next week. All right, so we're gonna be making quite a few changes here. First off, let's go ahead and create two new exports. This is going to be for the skeleton 3D as well as for the physical bone 3D of the chest bone. We're really just using this to get the ID for the chest bone itself. Then we are also gonna need two references to the node 3ds for the chest target point and the chest target container and that's this container right here and that behaves almost identical to the hand ik system then we're going to need a couple float variables for our settings and i'll go through these one by one so the first one is the jump velocity that's the actual velocity each one of the hand placements are going to apply to the character's movement the second one is the step bounce power that is the upward velocity that we're going to apply to each movement that just gives it a little bit of bounce if you set it up too high you end up with a whole crowd of them bouncing around like frogs and it looks very funny but not exactly ideal so a little bit of bounce helps with that. And then the torso bounce visual strength is actually going to be the visuals, but not the collider itself. Just the actual rig is going to move up and down based off of how many feet are on the ground at any given point. This just helps with a little bit of movement so that the torso doesn't look perfectly static. Later on, we're probably going to extend this to make the torso bend around based off of what legs are touching the ground. But for now, this is just what 
what we've got. And then we've also got the torso lerp speed, which is the speed at which the y-axis is adjusted for that visual bounce. And then we have the torso rotation lerp speed, which is just the rotation in world space of the torso. And we softened that up a little bit because it was moving a little bit too jankily. We do need to go ahead and modify the body width float here. We don't need just a base body width. We're going to have a shoulder and bottom body width. This is going to be the width of the raycast origin points, whereas the width of the raycast target points. Now we do need to go ahead and also create an ID down here for the for the chest bone ID, as well as a vector three for the current torso offset. All right, now first off in the ready function, we can go ahead and assign the chest bone ID and we can use the chest bone dot get bone ID. That's just a function in the physical bone 3D. And that'll get us the ID that we can use to determine where the bones location is as well as adjust that in the skeleton. Now we're gonna go ahead and create a function just below the physics process for update body positions. And we're gonna go ahead and call that in the bottom of the physics process. We are also gonna go ahead and adjust the current torso offset here. Now this works in local space. So we're going to be using the vector three dot down. Then we're gonna multiply it by the current limbs where we are currently traveling. So the number of limbs that are currently moving and the count of those multiplied by the torso bounce streak. Now we don't actually have access to the currently traveling because that is a private variable. So we'll go ahead and set that to public. And that should clear that up. And this is just going to be so the torso will stay at a base position. And then if all limbs are off the ground, it will be lower down. Now we can go ahead and work on the update body position. So let's go ahead and create a new vector three for the new location. We're just gonna default that to the chest current location. And we're going to set the X and Z to where the enemy body, that is the roller ball and its global position. But the Y is going to be lurping between its current Y and a target Y. And the way you do this is you take the current global position of the enemy body and you add to it the current torso offset multiplied by the transform basis of the chest target container. This just puts that into a world Space based off of the rotation of the chest target container. So if it's rotated 45 degrees to the right, instead of going straight up, it's going to go up and to the right, if that makes sense. Then we just get the Y of that, and we're lerping between the original Y and that Y. Taking delta, multiply it by torso lerp speed. We can set the chest target container dot global position to the new location. Now for the rotation, it's going to get a little bit more complicated. So we're going to go ahead and create a new vector three for target rotation. And first off, we're going to take the global transform of the chest target container, and we're going to use the looking at function which is going to make a duplicate transform. And that duplicate transform is going to have its forward vector pointed at a given location. In this case, we're going to be taking the chest target container dot global position, and we're going to be adding the last velocity onto it. So that's wherever we're currently moving is the looking vector. Now for the up vector, we do have to do a little bit of work here with taking the last velocity dot y and saying if it's absolute value, so either zero, negative 0 0.99 or a positive 0 0.99 is greater than that value, then we're going to use vector 3 dot back. And if not, we're going to use vector 3 dot up as the up vector. This just prevents those errors we saw before. And then once again, because we're actually creating a duplicate transform 3D here, we use the basis dot get Euler to actually get the angle of that transform. So in order to apply that transform, however, we are going to have to do lerp angle. Now we did this with the actual character controller, so I'm gonna go over this real quick. Basically, we're taking the global rotation and we're lerping it to a new vector three that is the X, Y, and Z lerp angle between the original rotation and the target rotation. And the reason why we use lerp angle is because if you're from five degrees to 350 degrees, you don't wanna go through the entire rotation all the way around to get to 350 degrees. The fastest direction is to just go down from five and then down from 360 degrees over to 350. And that's how lerp angle works, except it works only with radian. So be aware of that. You can't punch degrees directly in. Now down here, we can go ahead and set the skeleton.global position to the chest target container.global position. All this really does is prevent culling errors because the skeleton is where it actually defines where the enemy is. And so if the base skeleton is out of your field of view, but the actual model is still in your field of view, it'll flicker and act weird. Then we can go ahead and set the bone position of the chest bone ID to that global position of the chest target point, not the chest target container. And then we use the skeleton.toLocal to convert that to local space. And then all we're going to do is do the same thing with set bone pose rotation. And we're going to use the chest target point dot global transform dot basis dot get rotation quaternion because setting pose rotation takes quaternions. And that's pretty much it for the body position. Now we do need to go ahead and create a new function. This one's not actually going to be called here. It's going to be called later on in the limbs, but we need to get out of the way. 
And all this function is really going to do is go ahead and take in the desired direction that we want to move as well as the target point that is the origin of the velocity change. And first off we're going to go ahead and create a new float for the jump velocity and we're going to check to see if the enemy body that's the roller ball if its linear velocity is in a different direction than its desired velocity and that's a dot product now dot product basically just takes two vector threes and if they are exactly in the same direction it returns a one and if they're in exactly the opposite direction it returns a negative one so if we're checking if it's less than zero that means that it is more in the op wrong direction than it is in the right direction it's more than 90 degrees away so now the desired velocity here doesn't actually work and the reason for that is we are currently using a rigid body 3d right here and over here in the basic enemy navigation we haven't actually created a public variable for that yet so let's go ahead and create that and we'll get back to this on how we're actually going to set this up in here next episode but now we have access to the desired velocity and so what we can do is go ahead and if we're going in the wrong direction we can multiply the current velocity by the desired velocity dot link and so all that's going to do is give us a bit of a bump in the opposite direction if we're going in the wrong direction and i'm going to go ahead and multiply it by the velocity accounting multiplier if i didn't do this it just kind of jerks around a whole bunch and that just kind of settles it down a little bit i really should make that its own variable but we'll worry about that later then all we have to do after that is go ahead and apply the impulse and we'll take the desired direction multiply it by the current velocity add to it the step bounce power multiplied by the transform.basis.y so that's the up vector of the chest target container and we're going to use the target point in local space to the enemy body and that's it for that we can go ahead and go down here to the get target length position we do need to make a couple modifications down here so for the first line we're going to go ahead and take into account a up vector of the chest target container by just one unit so one meter above the chest and the reason why we do this is because i found that when ai were right up next to a rock and they were looking down their arm couldn't reach up and like place on the side of the rock next to them so i did this so that that way we can reach up onto rocks that are nearby the torso now we do have to account for it down here later on but it just helps with the visuals so let's go ahead and take these three lines right here and comment them out and we're going to create a couple variables here so the first one is going to be the center point and it's going to be the base target position and then the second one is the side angle and we're going to essentially get the direction that we want to move in for the shoulder or for the offset for the bottom of the hand so in this case we're going to be using the last velocity dot cross and that gets you your perpendicular vector if you remember and we're going to use the chest target container dot transform dot basis dot y as opposed to vector three dot up that way we get the perpendicular vector to the actual torso then then we go ahead and multiply it by whether the target limb is left hand or left foot we multiply it by negative one so that gets us our left direction and then we're going to take the target position and we're going to equal it not add to it but just set its value to the center point plus the side angle multiplied by the shoulder body width divided by two that gets our actual shoulder position and at this point we can go ahead and set the limb raycast.global position to that target position now that we have our shoulder position we need to go back to our center point and move again for the actual body bottom width and then we're just going to add to it the down vector multiplied by the target offset down so that just moves it down based off of the torso's current rotation and that's going to be pretty much it for that we should be good to go on the rest of the code works just the exact same and we'll get back to it next week we're going to leave it here we'll be working on the limb itself as well as the basic enemy navigation agent next week and we'll go ahead and put it together into what you see on screen now thank you all for watching i did want to thank everyone before i signed off for the 1000 subscribers i actually went over that while i was on vacation it's means a lot and it's just a crazy number of people but as always i hope you all have a wonderful week and we'll see you all back here next week for the next tutorial